Okay, let's play a game. Let's what? Let's play a game. Let's put this in, in, into practice. So, uh, Mike and you can handle the, the first um, handout. So, we're going to look at a company together. And I'm only going to give you some numbers. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at those numbers. And I want you to tell me what's going on with the company. Okay? As a group. So let's hand that out. Yeah, so everybody gets a, gets a copy. So taking what you've learned so far, okay? Taking what you've learned so far, and just look at the financial statement and look at what's going on. And I want you to, to get what's the story behind this company, what is going on, what's wrong, what, or what's good. What's good about the company, too? Okay, what's good about the company, what's the story, what's bad about the company, what's happening? So do it as a group. Okay, let me give you, let's say, 10 minutes for that, okay? Go for it. No, you don't, right, no, accountant, don't, don't get involved. No cheating, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, don't, just silence, mute, okay? Don't help them. In fact, if anything, mislead them a bit. Just, like, tell them. Yeah, yeah don't say anything. Give your neighbor a high five and say, we can do this. We can do this. Okay. Now. Okay. Okay. So how many of you agree this is a typical, you know, financial statement, right? Balance sheet, income statement, density uh, code. So now, it's okay, to be honest. How many find this a little bit, look at numbers like, you know, a little bit confusing? It's okay. Yeah. That's how we learn, yes? yes? It's perfectly fine. It's not about right or wrong. It's about learning together. About what? Learning. That's okay. We'll work through this together. So you look at this, like, what, what does that mean? So looking at this, what could you tell me about this company? What's the story behind what's going on? Yes, Kevin. Bigger space because they're, they're, they're what? What happened? How do you know that? Because the rent has gone up from so 2013, $12,000, $199, 2014, $48,000, right? Is there a small jump or big jump? Yeah. Big jump. So they, they, possibly they're expanding too quick, right? Okay, so that's an assumption. So we'll verify that in a second, right? So good. What else? What, what else is going on? Okay, they have a lot of inventory. Where do you see that? On the balance, on the balance sheet, right? Yeah. Now, how, how can you tell they have a lot of inventory? So from the first, uh, first year 2013, yes? yes. Which is 223000 some odd dollars, right? To 2015, $476,000 and $42,000. A lot of inventory, yes? yes? And also, you mentioned that they have a lot of what? Um, accounts receivables. Accounts receivables. Okay, from the first year, 121,000 some dollars to 2015, 200, almost 300,000 dollars accounts receivable. Does that affect your cash flow, yes or no? Yes. Okay, hell yeah. So, a lot of inventory, a lot of accounts receivable. Is that good? No, no right? You can see. What else? The, the what? The cash on hand is dropping, look. 2013, $34,000. Now, remember, I said a balance sheet is a what? 
a snapshot. So this only tells you what? What's the date? September, September what? 30th. 30th. It's only that snapshot, right? Why are they? So you look at 2015, September 30th, only $2,486. Where did all the cash go? Yeah, and also? Most of expenses have gone up, yes. But a lot of cash is what accounts? Receivable, they have not collect. Right? They have not collect. So is that dangerous? Yeah. Have running a company that's doing nine hundred some one thousand dollars in revenue, the expense is four hundred and forty five thousand dollars, they have two thousand some odd dollars in cash. That is not very good, right? It's not very good. What else? What else can you see? Good, so far so good. Good job. Yes. Yes. Okay, not proper maintenance for the inventory and equipment. How, where do you see that? So 2014, and you see the, where is it? The repairs and maintenance, right? Okay. So you see 2013, they're spending 3,000 some dollars. 2014, they're not spending anything, right? And then, and then 2015, spending 600 some more dollars. Yeah, amortization is shot up from first year $4,555 to $25,944, yes. So again, we're assuming if they do better repairs and maintenance, right, you have better cash flow. Does that make sense? Right, so that's a little line. So you look at the two lines and it tells you a story, doesn't it? Yeah, what else do you see? Great job, great job. Yes, what else do you see? There's a, there's a big biggie. There's a biggie here. Come on. What, what's happening with salaries? Okay, from 100, first year how much? 113,421 to 2015 how much? 200, more than, more than double, right? So the expanding more inventory, right? More people, but look at what's, what's happening with the gross profit? Okay, it's dropping, right? Okay, the percentage wise, yes? What else do you see? What else do you see? What do you see? Yes, cost of sales. So they're buying maybe too much, too confident of what they want to do. They're expanding versus maybe instead, maybe it's nice to grow nice and steady. Maybe let's grow sales first. Maybe we don't have every item that a customer wants, but let's we serve more cash, does that make sense? You see how, is that interesting? You look at these numbers, oh okay, that's, that's we, we're, we're just talking, we look, it's two sheets of paper. Have I told you anything about the company? No. Do you know what the hell they sell? No. no. But you look at this company, I I'm, I'm promise you, you look at this, you know awful lot about their business. Maybe more than the business owner themselves. They, they don't even know. Actually, you look at that numbers, if you are the owner of this company, how would you be feeling? You'd be very, very, you would freaked out, yes? Yeah. But if you just, listen, listen, but if you just look at the income statement, and you look at, oh my, if you just look at the revenue, eh, inventory, if revenue is going up what? Every year. I must be doing a damn good job as a CEO. Okay, eh, I should give myself a pat in the back. Look at how awesome I am. Even right? the yeah, even the retain. Look at the retain earnings. Look at the retain earnings. Where do you see that? Where do you see that? Yep, retain earnings. 2013, how much? 212, yes. Okay. You're talking about percentage? Where do you see it's going down? It's going up. So we turn on is going up. What's wrong with that? That's a big key. Give the mic, give the mic to, to Ryan. By the way, let's give Ryan a, a round of applause because he's the one that put this together <laughs> to, to help me out with this exercise. From, so, so Ryan is a CA uh, from a Pacific Chartered Accountant. So it's not fair. So I, I ask him not to help out the table because this would not be fair, right? You know, so. So, 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 Ryan, have they pointed out some of the problems that's going on? Uh, yeah, not really. 
Now, l- let me ask you about what about do to shareholder? What's going on there? Yeah, turn on. Yes, what's going on here? All right, so. Look at the number, page, page two. Yeah, page two. Yeah. So due to shareholder, and uh, like Adam was saying, he said the retained earnings is going up. So he was saying, you know, are they hoarding onto cash? Well, that could be true. But then if you take a flip side and look at this, the shareholder loan is actually going up. So what does that mean? What does that mean? He's not getting paid. Not only he's not getting paid, what does that mean? He's putting in money into the business to keep it floating. So from 2013, $150,000 to then an additional $100,000, right? In the two years' time. That is scary. Yeah, he also owns a big chunk. He can actually do a hostile takeover. To this company? Yeah. Okay, so that's a good question. That's a good question. So, it so, is, yeah. so, so Ryan, what, what if, uh, see, look at this, so yeah. professional accounting, right? So, so, so what if I wanted, let's like, say, I'm looking at this company here, and sure. maybe possibly I want to buy it out. Sure. What would you advise me? I would do exactly what you've kind of done right now, is do a vertical and horizontal analysis. So take a look at the percentages, see what's going up, see what's going down. Take a look at a few of the main accounts. So inventory is pointed out, the inventory management is quite bad. In actuality, they're actually losing on profitability, they're losing on their sales, and are hoarding uh, assets. Yes. Which is terrible. He's bleeding money, he's taking on some short-term debt, uh, the due to shareholder loans are increasing. You're thinking, well, that's great. The company owes him that much money, <laughs> but he probably mortgaged his house, put the money in the company in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's got all this personal debt as well. Yeah. Um, you've got accounts payable, which is growing. A uh, big one that actually nobody picked up on was income taxes payable went up from 33000 Wait, 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 wait. So, so income tax payable. Yeah. Right? Income tax payable. So income page tax three. payable. Yeah. Uh, page three. Take a look at the income statement. So you see all those income taxes there? Yeah. Then flip over to page two on the balance sheet. It's gone up. They're not even paying their income taxes. Ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you think the Revenue Canada likes that? No. <laughs> okay. So you look at the numbers, you know they're not paying their taxes. So he's bleeding money, have way too much inventory, putting, maybe mortgaging his house, putting into the company, and, and he's not paying his taxes. Okay, he's drinking a lot. <laughs> He's drinking a lot. Well, yes. the meals entertainment will go up for that. Yes, so, yeah. yes, Jerry. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, what does account feature mean? I know it's what does it mean to receive me, but could you explain to me? Yes, please. Explain what sure. does account receivable mean? Yes. Accounts receivable is basically when you make a sale, uh, like we were talking about with the fifty percent down and fifty percent you have still yet to receive. It's basically your sales you haven't received in physical cash yet. So you notice his, his sales is going up, looks great, like Dan was saying, it's gone up to 900,000, but at the same time his AR is also going up just as much. He's actually not collecting on physical cash, which is bad because some of that you may never actually even collect on, and that's called bad debts. And they want to make sure a good collections department. Mm-hmm. What does share capital mean? Share capital, yes. Absolutely, share capital. So this is gonna be a little different because this is a private company. This is, uh, we tailor this to look like something that you guys would look at for your own financial statements. Mm-hmm. Share capital, that's $12. That's the value of your shares that you purchased when you started your company. Yeah. Public, when we need to go public? Well, this is no, a, pri- this private, is a private, private company. Private, yeah. Public companies when you list on the stock exchange. Until most of you guys do an IPO, you're going to be private. I, I don't understand what share capital means. Sorry. So, so share capital is the value of your shares. So when you incorporate your company, mm-hmm. you have to have shares in your company. You, you have, have to give it a value, right? Yeah. And how yeah. many, how many yeah. shares are you going to issue? Right? Yeah, you can have 100 shares, 10 shares, whatever, but they yeah. have a value when you bought into them. Mm-hmm. It could be a dollar share, it could yeah, be a $10 it could be a dollar, share. 10 cents, whatever. Mm-hmm. What does uh, retained earnings mean? Yeah, retained yeah earnings. so retained earnings, absolutely. Retained earnings, think of it this way. They are the earnings that are retained in your company they have not pulled out yet. They have not pulled out. So this money they supposed to have been made, exactly. but they have not pulled out. So again, this, this, is, this is a snapshot. It's not a fact, right? So they have made that money because there's a lot of accounts receivable, exactly. right? Exactly, there's a lot of accounts but receivable. And sub- some yeah, but they have not collected the money put in the pocket yet. Yeah. So does uh, return to earnings mean uh, the accounts receivable? I'm, I, I'm not very clear nope, about No, it's it. absolutely fine. Yeah. Retained earnings is pretty much, Give an example. In, in theory, yeah. the cash that you haven't pulled out of your company, if you will. It's your assets, so everything you have, like Dan was saying, you on the yeah. that you mm-hmm. own. Mm-hmm. Uh, minus your liabilities, so the amount that you owe somebody oh, yeah. else, yeah. 
that is what you're, you have inside your that company. You could that, go out. That, you could, that could go out. Now, in this case, and I don't know if it's pointed out, some of those retainer rings are actually made up of the debt that he's taken on or she's taken on mm -hmm. in their company. Yeah. So it's not all clean, like free cash flow. Mm -hmm. And I noticed uh, Dan took out the cash flow statement because that, uh, that would have given a lot of the answers away. Mm -hmm. But if you took a look at that, the free cash flow was actually going down. It was dropping. It was actually getting pretty bad. Okay, so hold on a second, hold on a second. Hold on. So you can see that's a good conversation that you could have if this is your company, right? To have with the accountant. Can you see that? Yeah, it's, there's no such thing as a stupid question. You get it? No, no absolutely. Yeah, that's I'm not, not my mind is stupid, but I'd like to learn anything. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what does that, exactly, you know, what does that mean? Like, even it's so obvious, account receivable, right? But what does that mean? Okay, mm, now I see, right? Sherry, yes, one more question. Yes. Said, oh, I had a shady accountant. Yeah. Is it because they, they weren't monitoring this and watching this? <laughs> and knowing what's good question. No, it is a good question. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Ryan answer that. Um, okay, keeping it very simple, very short, yes. not taking much dance time. A lot of people say they're accountants. It doesn't mean they're actually qualified what to do. And there's different kinds of accountants. So I'm a chartered accountant, I guess we're chartered professional accountants now. It took me seven years to become a CA. So we're more than just bookkeepers. When somebody talks about a shady accountant, it depends they're about their code of ethics, depends about how good we're able to talk mm -hmm. and, and ask questions. I sit down and talk with clients all the time. We're never billing them. We never take on you know, nickel and dime of clients. It's about the value that you get. So if you ask your accountant questions, so all you should have accounts. If you have your accounts, you should be asking these hard questions. Mm -hmm. They should be able to explain it to you. If your accountant cannot explain your own financial statements to you, you probably have a problem. Oh, oh if they say to you, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, don't don't worry about it. They will. Either they'll say you don't need to worry about it, yeah, don't or we'll talk it. to you about it later. And you'll be surprised how many accounts actually say that or bookkeepers say that. Yeah. It's because they don't know. Yes, one more question. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, one more question. Absolutely. Yeah, what's the difference between audited financials and Absolutely. Un so un audited, audited financials, financials <laughs> the first one is you pay a lot more for audited financials. Yeah. The reason why is, is a bank, let's say, let's say you have a loan, okay? Mm -hmm. The bank's gonna wanna have uh, assurance that the numbers you have on here, exactly like you pointed out, are real. Yeah. So the accountant will go in and set an audit team and you'll hire a third and party out, yeah. and they will actually go through and check everything out and make sure those numbers are real. These are unaudited statements, which probably the majority of the people will have, mm -hmm. and that's because you know, your bank's not gonna require audited statements, you know, there's no need to have one. That being said, if you have a good accountant, they will check through, ask questions, is it reasonable that these numbers exist, and go from there. But it is, it's usually quite expensive to have an audit. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, this is a quite great commodity in signing a financial statement, meaning that it was very numbers, I mean, it's very obvious. Mm -hmm. What indicators, give me three different indicators, three indicators that okay. I can see if I see ups and downs, ups and downs, and numbers, something on the up, and before the ups, I don't know. Okay, that's a good yeah. question, but hold on to that. Hold on to that. Okay. Hold on to that. So, 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 warm applause for Ryan. Hold on, it's a good question. <laughs> because I actually we talk about the the, the, the cockpit. There's three important dials. Which what, what are they? What, no, what are they? What's the first one? Balance sheet. What's the second one? What's the third one? Okay, now pass out the cash flow statement. I want you to see the cash flow statement. See if you get a different story. Yep. And I'll give you very quickly, very quickly, I'll give you three minutes to go through that. Look at the cash flow statement, just three minutes. And discuss among the table. What is going on? Some of you will be like, oh. Just one piece of paper. One additional piece of paper. What does that mean? Look at the cash flow statement. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
You have made up company. <laughs> but a lot of companies are like that. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Chris, you're getting it, right? Right? Give your neighbor a high five and say, holy smoke. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. Now looking at the cash flow statement, do you get a better understanding exactly what's going on? Yes or no? What is this telling you? What is it? Sinking ship, Titanic, yes. Bad news, yes. Now you look, when you look, listen. Sell. Nobody wants to buy this shit. <laughs> negative. It means it's negative. So, so you look at a balance sheet and you look at income statement. You thought it was pretty bad, right? When you look at this, what does that tell you? It's really bad. It's like you thought it's pretty. This is really bad. Okay. How, Ryan? How how close are they for like from losing that company? I'd say maybe less than six months. Six months. And the owner goes to work and talks to all the employees. Hey, how's it going? Revenue's good. Good job, guys. <laughs> right? Employees have no idea. In a few months, you'll be out of job. Not just out of job, because how, how much money he's owing. OK. This would wipe him out. This would wipe him out. All because he doesn't read his financials. I want you to get how serious this is. I want it to see, like, I want you to see, not just, we're, not, we're having fun, we're looking at numbers, right? But look at the numbers, for some of you, if you don't look at the numbers, from now on, are you going to have a cash flow statement, yes or no? Yeah. Hell yeah. How often you review it? Once a year? Uh, at least quarterly, right? At least quarterly. You look at what is going on here. Ask questions. Make some changes. What else have you learned? What else have you learned? What's going on with the numbers? What's, what's the most scary aspect of this thing? Cash, hmm? cash at end of year? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah cash, end of year. Yeah, cash paid to supplies and employees. So is it possible? I don't know, because we have to find a little bit. But maybe, is it maybe a possible a good idea maybe to lay off some of the people that he has, yeah. right? Maybe get rid of some of the inventories that's not being, you know, maybe the debt inventory, not selling well. Get some cash coming in, right? So, but if you don't know the numbers, how do you know those are the right decisions, yeah. right? The strategies and tactics, he could have just said, you know what, I think, I think we need to do another Facebook campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Is that his problem? <laughs> no. no. But he might think, that's my problem, man. I need, some, I need more sales. I just need to sell more stuff. Dude, your problem is not sales. It's accounts receivable. It's inventory, right? It's repairs and management. It's employee. Your overhead is too high. Now, the good news is those things actually can be fixed relatively in a short period of time. Okay, you can do a blowout sell, lay off people. It actually doesn't take as long as you might think. Make sense? Yeah, okay, so far so good. Yes, Kevin, yes. Yes. Yep, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Yes. Yep, it would affect you. 
Uh, again, facts don't cease to exist just because you choose to ignore them, right? Yeah. Now, yes, one more question. We got, I got to keep going, yes. Yes. Oh, okay, I think the question is, let's say it depends on, I'm in a manufacturing business. What, what, what would be a good industry standard? What, what is a typical you know, profit margin? Am I within that range or am I not? Is there a site? Is there something that like that? Well, you need benchmarking with your challenge that you're going to be with your right? Yeah. So yeah. Yes. So in a service-based business as a coach. And, yeah. and also a lot of this is highly personal, yeah. right? It's like what, 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 is, what is too much risk, what's not enough risk? What, is, what kind of profit margin you are looking for? How many hours you put in the business? How much money you want to actually take home, right? So some people say, you know, as a coach, if I make $50,000 a year, I'm quite happy. Some coaches, you know, I want to make at least a quarter million dollars take home in my pocket. Well, so what is your goal, right? Does that make sense? So I've got, you know, with this so far so good. We, I, you know, I'm, it's taking a bit of time, but we have to go through this, yes? yes. Yeah, so I, I'm going to go through some strategies. I'm a little bit behind, so I'm going to go a little bit faster. Is that okay? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, well, I still have a lot of profit maximizer I want to share with you. Ten times your finances. Ten times your business. Ten times your marketing. Ten times your life. Hit the subscribe button now.